Great. Good morning. So today we will be seeing about the anatomical parts of the ear. Okay, the anatomical structures and present in the ear. So we will be seeing the different parts of the ear, how we are able to hear the things. Okay. A little bit of physiology also we will be seeing it so that we can uh, it makes us interesting like how it how we are able to hear the stuff okay the ear as such is divided into three parts an external ear middle ear and an internal ear so there are three parts we are dividing uh, the ear into three parts okay to according to our convenience so that we can read about it in a better way so external middle and an inner inner ear okay the external ear it is the one which we are able to see outside and this is called as pinna okay pinna or auricle okay and in the center of this pinna there is a small opening and this is called as external acoustic meatus okay external acoustic meatus Okay, the other things you need not remember. Okay, the concar, lobule, tragus. Okay, those things are not needed. Okay, so that's for medical students. So this one is called a spina, and this part, the hole through which the the we are able to hear. So that's the external acoustic meatus. All right. Now what happens? The external this one is called as the external acoustic meatus. It is actually a canal. Okay, meatus or a canal, external auditory canal or external or uh, auditory meatus. Okay, it is a canal, and at the end of it, there is a eardrum. Okay, there is an eardrum. Okay, it is the eardrum is also called as a tympanic membrane. If you see the ear, okay. You can check uh, your uh, family members. Okay, you just shine a torch light. Okay, you will not be able to see this eardrum. That's because this external auditory canal, it's not straight. Okay, it is not straight. Okay, it is like a zigzag shape, S shaped structure. Okay, it is. Uh, like an S shaped structure, so you will not be able to see the eardrum directly. Okay. The outer part of this external auditory canal is cartilaginous, whereas the inner part is bony. So here you can see the bony part. The outer part is cartilaginous and the inner part is bony. And the external auditory canal is supplied by these two nerves, auricular temporal nerve and vagus nerves. Okay, it is uh, controlled by the, the sensation of this external auditory canal. It's by auricular temporal and the vagus nerves. Okay, but how are you going to examine the eardrum? Suppose if you want to check the ear, okay, so how, are, how will you be able to see? You are not able to see the eardrum, right? So how to check out the eardrum? So for this, we need to pull the ear up back and out okay so this will straighten the auditory canal so you need to pull it the pull the pin up, up okay backwards okay and then outwards okay so this will straighten up the canal and you will be able to see the auditory canal a little bit the eardrum a little bit however in children okay in children it is quite easy because in children the external auditory canal is straight okay but in adults it's not straight okay in children it is straight but not in adults okay so external auditory canal okay the outer part is by cartilaginous inner is by bone and is supplied by the auricular temporal and the vagus nerves now the tympanic membrane or the eardrum the eardrum if you check out the eardrum it's not perpendicular you can see the external auditory canal it is not perpendicular it is leaning okay it is slightly slanted how is it slanted it is slanted downwards it's looking downwards forwards and laterally okay so downwards forwards 
and laterally okay why it is situated the why it is looking like this okay so this is in order to receive the auditory impulses whatever we are able to hear so it collects all the the uh, auditory sound it enters through the pinna and enters through this external auditory canal and then it will hit the tympanic membrane okay in order to receive all the uh, auditory impulses okay which are present in the lateral and the surroundings so that's why the eardrum is placed like this downwards forwards and laterally and when you are looking into the eardrum you need to note down these two structures ambo and cone of light okay so i will be say, telling about this and before this when you are examining the ear you will be using an instrument which is called as otoscope okay otoscope okay for the eye you were using ophthalmoscope so here it is otoscope okay so i'll just show you that instrument so this is the instrument it's called as otoscope so what happens there is a light source at one end and there is a lens at the other end okay so what happens that the physician or the examiner okay so they will be looking through this lens okay the light will be shown okay so the light will be thrown into the external auditory canal and the light falls on the eardrum so this is just to check out whether the eardrum is normal or not okay and not only that okay it also checks the part which is behind the eardrum okay it is just behind the eardrum what is behind the eardrum the middle ear okay the middle ear the middle ear is a very important structure okay and it is like a closed room okay it's like a closed room okay so there is no place for it to escape except for a small opening which is connected to the pharynx which is the auditory tube okay the auditory tube if you remember in the respiratory system we have read it right which opens into the nasopharynx auditory tube or eustachian tube or pharyngotympanic tube all are same okay the auditory tube okay so this is a closed cavity okay and whenever a person opens his mouth that that time only the auditory tube will open okay we have seen it right when the plane goes up the ears feel full okay the ears feel full because the outside pressure is actually coming down and the middle ear pressure is high so it pushes the eardrum so the person feels like as if the eardrum the ear is full then what he does he chews or so takes up a chocolate or drink something at that time the auditory tube opens and the increased pressure in the middle ear is released okay so when we are looking we are able to see the external if there is any problem in the external ear we will be able to see but we will not be able to see what is present in the middle ear because the eardrum is present and eardrum is very important okay and if the eardrum is damaged the person cannot hear okay so if there are middle ear pathologies that also we can find out using this instrument called as otoscope so this is to find out not only the external ear problems not only the eardrum problems but also the middle ear problems how can we see okay the external ear we can see eardrum okay we can see but how can we see the what is happening inside the middle ear through this so for this we need to know what is ambo and cone of light when you throw a light on the eardrum you will be able to see the bone which is present inside the eardrum okay you in this picture here you can see the bone which is present inside the eardrum which pulls the eardrum and this bone is malleus okay malleus okay so this bone is a malleus okay and the end of the malleus it is round shape and it's called as ambo 
okay it is called as umbo okay and when you throw off throw a light okay because the eardrum is not straight and it is downwards forwards and laterally the reflection of the light will be in the shape of a cone okay will be in the shape of the cone and the apex of the cone will correspond to the umbo okay so here you can see it is like a triangle shape okay it's a cone shape and the apex it's coinciding with the umbo okay the apex is coinciding with the umbo okay do you understand this any doubts okay so the malleus the end of the malleus it's the umbo okay the light which is thrown it looks in the shape of a cone which is called as a cone of light the apex of the cone of light and the umbo okay usually coincides okay so this is the picture of a child okay so here you can see the cone of light and this is the uh, malleus the handle of malleus the umbo so they are coinciding okay this means that the ear the external ear middle ear and the eardrum are normal okay especially with regard to the middle ear okay this shows that the middle ear is normal so if the cone of light is corresponding to the umbo it means that the person is normal okay now the eardrum the eardrum has got two parts the upper part of the eardrum is called as pars flaccida and the lower part of the eardrum it's called as pars tensa okay it's called as pars tensa okay because this is tense and this is flaccid okay and it is the tense part which vibrates it's just like a stereo okay so when it vibrates when the eardrum vibrates the vibration is sent to the is sent to the inner ossicles the malleus okay all right now let's see the case so that we can understand better so this is a 7 year old boy who was brought to the pediatric department and he had poor language development okay so he could not uh, speak okay the language was very poor okay he was also a school a less school achiever and he was not a good listener as well okay on uh, recording the history they found out that the child falls ill frequently and he complains of dull pain in the ear and when you look into the ear it looks like this okay you look through the otoscope it looks like this do you see any abnormality do you see any abnormality in this picture in the cone of light yes very good the cone of light okay the cone of light the apex of the cone of light is here whereas the umbo is here okay so the apex of the cone of light is here and the umbo is here which means that the eardrum is being pushed outwards why the eardrum is being pushed outwards because there is something inside the middle ear which is pushing the eardrum okay and this is usually called as glue ear okay it's called as glue ear what happens especially during the winter times okay children they will have uh, infection of the middle ear okay the infection of the middle ear okay and there will be fluid which gets collected in the middle ear and this fluid pushes the eardrum okay it pushes the eardrum and when it pushes the eardrum we will be able to see a structure like this okay and because there is fluid inside this middle ear the child will be unable to hear okay and naturally when the child is unable to hear he will not be able to listen to the classes in the school okay and naturally he will not be a good school achiever okay you see like how much it is linked okay sometimes even the child 
cannot speak also okay if there is the because the, the speech may be normal okay speech might be normal but because of the hearing problem the child cannot speak and the child doesn't know that okay i cannot they cannot tell like unlike adults they cannot tell like i cannot hear okay so that's why it's very important to find out whether the child is able to hear or not okay so here this is one of the condition which is called as glue ear where there is fluid in the middle ear okay and uh, that can be detected using the otoscope all right any doubts all right now let's go to the middle ear the middle ear as i said it is like a closed room okay it is like a closed room so imagine a room so it has got a floor a roof okay a medial wall a lateral wall an anterior wall and a posterior wall okay now see here this is like a room okay i'll just show you a nice picture yes let's take up this picture only so it looks like a room okay so it has got a floor it has got a roof okay it has got a lateral wall it has got a medial wall okay the anterior wall cannot be seen okay that is the part which has been removed and here this is the behind the bones so that's the posterior wall all right so these are the uh, contents of the middle ear okay so now you know that the middle ear they contain these ossicles and naturally we need to know the structures which are surrounding the middle ear okay the floor of the middle ear close to the floor of the middle ear there is a huge vein which is the internal jugular vein which comes from the brain okay you know the superior sagittal sinus inferior sagittal sinus okay transverse sinus sigmoid sinus all this join together and then they come out of the skull through this internal jugular vein okay so this is very close to the floor of the middle ear the anterior aspect of the middle ear it is related to an artery which is the internal carotid artery we have also seen this the internal carotid artery supplies the brain and also there is a tube the auditory tube okay so internal carotid artery and the auditory tube the posterior part of the middle ear there is mastoid process there is a small elevation which is called as pyramid on the posterior part and from the pyramid there will be a small muscle from the apex of the pyramid there is a small muscle which is called as stapedius okay which is called as stapedius okay so in the posterior part there is mastoid pyramid stapedius <coughs> the lateral part okay the lateral part it is the tympanic membrane we have already seen that okay the tympanic membrane the medial portion in the medial portion there is a small elevation which is protruding from the inner ear there is something which is protruding from the inner ear and that's called as promontory okay promontory and there is an oval window and a round window okay oval window and a round window okay so now let's see again the middle ear the floor there is internal jugular vein anteriorly internal carotid artery and auditory tube posteriorly mastoid process pyramid and from the apex of the pyramid it is a, there is a muscle which is called a stapedius muscle i will be discussing about this later okay laterally there is tympanic membrane medially there is promontory round the round window and the oval window okay so now why should i know about all these things 
Okay, so this is because I need to know all these things. Middle ear is such an important structure. Okay, and any infection of the middle ear, you should treat it immediately. Because otherwise, say the infection is here, it can erode the skull and then enter into the brain. Okay, it can damage the posterior structures or the anterior structures. If it damages the posterior, the inferior, the floor, it can erode the internal jugular vein. Okay, if it erodes the anterior wall, internal carotid artery is there. So that can be damaged. Okay, if it goes medially, it can damage the inner ear. Okay, so that's why the middle ear infections are very important to be diagnosed. Okay, so you should not take it lightly and they need to be treated out immediately, the middle ear infection. So that's why you need to know like what are the structures which surround the middle ear. Okay, the floor is by the internal jugular vein, anteriorly by the internal carotid artery and the auditory tube, posteriorly by the mastoid process, primate, and the muscle which emerges from the primate, that's the stapedius, laterally by the tympanic membrane, and medially by the <coughs> promontory, oval window, and the round window. Any doubts? All right. Then let's go to the last part of uh, today's session. So here we will be seeing about the bones which are present in the middle ear, which are called as auditory ossicles. Okay, so here you can see the bone which is attached to the eardrum, that's the malleus. Okay, so this is the malleus. Okay, this is called the handle of the malleus. And this lower part which we see through the eardrum, that's the umbo. So this is the malleus. This one is attached to the malleus, which is the incus. Okay, this is the incus. And lastly, the tiniest bone present in our human body, the stapes. Okay, it is the smallest bone which is present in the human body. Okay, the stapes. Okay, so this is attached to the incus. Okay, it's attached to the incus. Okay, and it will be sending the vibrations into the inner ear. It will be sending the vibrations into the inner ear. Okay, so in this picture, you are able to see malleus, incus, and status. Okay, so here you can see malleus. Okay, so when the sound wave comes, okay, it hits the eardrum. The eardrum vibrates, and when the eardrum vibrates, the malleus sends the vibrations to the incus. The incus then sends the vibration into the stapes. Okay, malleus, incus, and stapes. All right, any doubts? Any doubts? No, no, okay, so now I would be asking you two questions. Sorry, just one question. Okay, how come excessive noise does not damage the membranes? Okay, say for example, um, you know that there is going to be, uh, say, for someone is going to light up the firecracker. Okay, a firecracker. Okay, you know that there is going to be uh, a heavy noise which is going to come up. Some of them, they will close the ears. Okay, but rest of them, they do not close the ears. Okay, it's safe to close the ears because it will not damage the eardrum or the tympanic membranes. But what happens to the person who doesn't close the ears? Okay, the eardrum is still not damaged though there is a loud noise, okay? A loud noise comes, okay? But still the eardrum is not 
damaged. I'll give you another scenario. So this is one scenario. Okay, so this is one scenario. The first scenario in which one person is right lighting the firecracker. Okay, okay, and uh, he is not closing the ears. Okay, the eardrum is not damaged. Okay, the second scenario. The same person, okay, is walking on the street. Okay, he doesn't know that there is a firecracker. Okay, and it suddenly blows. The firecracker blows. He was not prepared, and that sound damages the eardrum. Okay, so two scenarios, right? The first scenario, he knows that okay, there is going to be a sound, heavy sound. Okay, at that time, the eardrum is not damaged. In the second time, the second scenario, he doesn't know that there is going to be a heavy sound. Okay, and at this time, the eardrum is damaged. All right. So when he knows that there is going to be a heavy sound, the eardrum is not damaged. When he doesn't know that there is going to be a heavy, heavy noise, okay, his eardrum is damaged, though the sound is just the same. Okay, just think about it and then let me know your answers tomorrow. All right. So we will be discussing the rest of the things in tomorrow's session. All right. Okay, doctor. Okay.